What's up guys, Kyle Phillips here, head firearm instructor of Cross Rifle Fitness Company. Today, we are going to learn how to disassemble, clean, reassemble, and do a functions check on a very popular first time gun, and that is the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield 380. Let's get into it. Here we have the M&P 380 shield, easy. There you go, you can see that. All right, this is my fiance's gun, little 380 that she has. I'm going to break it down, clean it, reassemble it, and then at the end we'll do a functions check. All right, before I touch this gun anymore, what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and clear it out. So I do have a magazine in here. Remember, whenever you're cleaning it, before you start messing with it, you always want to clear it out and make sure it's clear and empty and safe. Even if you're the most competent and safety-minded person, I don't care, do it anyways, right? You can never be too safe. So you always want to make sure you keep it pointed in the safest direction possible. And let's go ahead and drop the magazine. No freedom seeds in this magazine. Set that over there to the side. All right, now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and lock it back. Now, if you're new to the m, &P, m &P 380 Shield, or let me rephrase that, if you're new to handguns in general, right here you have your, on this particular handgun, you have your slide release, also your slide lock. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your slide, which is this part up here, and you're going to, well, do what it's called and slide it all the way to the back. Now, when you slide it all the way to the back, that doesn't guarantee that it's gonna stay up. As a matter of fact, it won't. You have to apply upward pressure right here. So take it, slide it back, upwards pressure, it locks it into place. You'll notice right here, there's a groove, a little cutout. That's is that's where this is gonna fit into place. So slide it back, lock it in, there you go. Now it's locked back. Now to that finish clearing it, we're just going to tip it forward like this. And first we're gonna look through the magazine well, and you can see that it's empty, all right? Now you can look back here. Sometimes there may be a round that's caught here, so you want to check back here as well. Now I get it. When you look into the magazine well, you'll see that at the same time, but I just want to point out the three different spots. So one, two, and then right down here in your chamber is going to be three. Now I get it with the camera. You're not going to be able to see it as clearly as with uh, your naked eye, but you can go ahead and take your pinky, put it in there. We had a phrase for this in the military, but I'm not going to say it on camera right now. And yeah, you're just going to check to make sure there's nothing lodged in there. Now, this gun is clear and we can go ahead and move into the next stage. So some of the tools that we'll be using today are going to be a rag, another rag. <laughs> I like to use two because one you can use to help wipe down the gun and then the other you can use to like wipe down your hands. And then if it gets really too greasy, you can use both of them to wipe down the grease on the gun. Either way, multiple rags is fine. Now, some people like to use a cleaning mat. Uh, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. They actually have some very cool cleaning mats that actually have the the. I don't know how to talk today. The specific gun that you're cleaning, and it's kind of broken down. You have all your little parts broken out on it. It's very cool. I prefer just to use the table. There's nothing wrong with this. Just make sure you clean it up. All right. Now, next up, we're gonna have a whole bunch of Q-tips. These little guys right here. If you can get the double-ended ones. It's even better. Some of them just have one right here. These are better. And it's kind of like a uh, Darth Maul. Super cool. So move those, set those right there. Next up, we're gonna use a toothbrush. Now you can go ahead and buy yourself a like legit cleaning brush, a uh, nylon brush. They even have some wire ones. I don't recommend the wire ones. A, a nice stiff or an even kind of loose nylon bristle brush will do the job just fine. Now, if you have a very, very old gun and it hasn't been cleaned, almost since the day that it was purchased by like your great grandfather <laughs> or something, then yeah, you may need a little something else, but we're gonna take care of our guns how we should, and we're gonna clean them every time we use them, so that way we make sure they're as clean as possible. Now, let's just say shit hits the fan, you don't get to clean your gun every day, fine, no big deal, but clean it as much as possible, that way you can rely on your gun to work when you need it to, and a silly malfunction that's not necessary doesn't happen. Next up is your bore brush right here. Now, you don't need a specific bore brush, 
I actually don't use this every time I clean, but it is very, very good at cleaning out some of that debris and built up carbon on the inside of your barrel. We will use this today just so you can watch it get used. Now, next up, a uh, bore brush. All right, I'm sorry, not a bore brush. We just did the bore brush. This is a bore snake. Now, this is probably more common amongst shotgun shooters, but this thing, in my opinion, is, is, is irreplaceable. I love this thing. I have a lot of experience with shotguns. That's probably why I'm saying it, but it's super cool. You just put this end through your barrel and pull it all the way through. And you have these little wires right here and that kind of agitates everything inside. And then this part of the, uh, the snake is thicker. So it drags everything you just dislodged out of it. Now you can buy these that are specific to your caliber or gauge if you're using a shotgun, uh, but we'll get into that in another video. Uh, so that's specific to your caliber. The one that I'm using is actually uh, rated for a 45. It's for my 1911. However, it'll still work just fine. If anything, it'll probably work a little bit better because it's larger than what the 380 is. So when you pull it through, it's even tighter, but not too tight where you like break something. It's not that serious, but it'll get it slick really quick. Um, the only thing you want to keep in mind is don't use one that's rated for a smaller caliber on your gun because then it, it kind of won't do anything. All right. And lastly, we are going to use some gun oil. Now with your gun oil, it doesn't really matter what you're using as long as it's some kind of lubricant and a, and a cleaner. They have a lot of like a lot of gun oil that's like multi-purposed. All right. This was just at the gun store when I bought my 1911. So that's why I have this. There's, there's nothing like spectacular about it, I guess. It does the job, it works just fine. It's relatively cheap, made in the USA. So can't really go wrong with that. But at the end of the day, don't stress too much about what kind of gun oil you're gonna use. It's not that serious. All right, so next we'll go ahead and get into the breaking down of the uh, gun. All right, so we've already cleared it. We took the magazine out, but I like to subscribe to the idea that the more you clear it, the safer you are, which kind of is kind of common sense. So we're gonna go ahead and clear it one more time. Look down there, look through the magazine well, and back there, okay, look away. This is a cool tip too, is look away from the gun when you do clear it, and then come back to it and clear it again. That way, if there was anything you missed, you can catch it the second time. Kind of the same idea, as like whenever you're doing a puzzle, if you do puzzles, and you can't figure it out because you've been doing the puzzle for like a week straight, and then somebody walks up and just grabs a piece and puts it in there because it's fresh eyes. Same exact thing, you're just getting fresh eyes on the gun. All right, so to take this apart, it's very, very, very simple. So we're gonna have it here. And now we're gonna go back to that state that we just had it. So we're gonna slide it back, and lock it open. Now, this little lever right here is where the magic happens. You take this and you literally just slide it down like so. That's it. Now, you're gonna return your slide back to regular and there's two ways of doing that, either pressing down on the slide release or kind of pulling it back and letting it go forward. I do a little bit of both. I like to just kind of pull it back just a little bit and then guide it forward. I don't like to slam it forward. Nothing bad will really happen. It's just a personal preference. Now you'll notice it's, it's went, it went forward more than what it was and that's fine because you're just gonna literally just slide it forward. That's that, that's how you take a slide off, right? Super easy. Now before you go into your slide and your barrel and everything. For field stripping it, this is all we're gonna do with this guy right here. So there's no need to go any further. If you're replacing your trigger, that's a whole nother video on its own. If you're replacing your magazine release, your slide catch, that's all its own separate video. For today's purpose and just general cleaning, you're done with this until it's time to actually clean it. So we're gonna set that over there. Now, this is the extremely complicated part. <laughs> so to take this part and get your barrel out, you, there's a whole complicated sequence of stuff you have to do. First, you're gonna take your guide rod and spring, pull that out like that, set that aside. Now, watch closely. To take your barrel out, you're just gonna grab it, go forward a little bit, pull it out. That's it. Very complicated. Obviously, I was lying to you. It's, it's extremely simple. So. That's as far as we're gonna break this down today. This is actually easier than the 1911 was and the, the previous videos that I put out. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and get ready to clean it. All right, so now it's time to clean it. We're gonna go ahead and just pick one piece at a time and we'll kind of move everything out of the way. We're gonna start with this. Go ahead and just slide these bad boys up. All right, 
Now what we're gonna do is grab our oil, pop that off, scoop that out the way. Now, you really wanna mainly focus when you're cleaning your handguns on the areas where you're gonna see any kind of discoloration. This one's pretty new and hasn't been ran through that many times. So there's not gonna be a whole lot of discoloration, but you can see some areas where it's metal on metal, right here grinding that friction. So that's the main areas you wanna focus on, but we're just gonna clean the whole thing anyway, so it doesn't matter. Just go ahead and spray some in there. Now, you don't wanna use an extreme amount of oil, but you don't have to worry about using too much unless you're just soaking it in there. All right, it's not a big deal. Either way, you're gonna clean it up. So go ahead and move this out of the way so we can function a little bit easier. You can take your toothbrush, you're literally just gonna scrub a dub dub, right? And you're just gonna scrub it down, clean it. Do so like this. Get in there in the magazine well. Clean that up. All right, these moving parts, make sure you get in there. And again, your gun really shouldn't be that dirty. So it won't be like that hard to actually clean it. Now, once you're done scrubbing it, you're going to just wipe down some of that excess oil. Now you won't get all of it, that's fine. You don't really wanna get all of it anyways. Now, one thing you'll notice about when you clean your guns, especially if you're new to it, is that no matter how many times you clean it, every time when you take it apart again, it's gonna seem like it's a little dirty again. That is because steel is porous. So when you put oil in there and you clean it down and you wipe it down, and you get it all good to go, and you put it up for a little bit and then you take it back out and put your, your put your pinky in a little small spot you're gonna find that you have a little bit of carbon on your finger that's fine that's normal not a big deal unless you're an armor in the military then it's life or death situation apparently but it's neither here nor there so go ahead and clean it out now for your magazine well you obviously can't put your finger all the way in there when you have cloth around it so just take like a little q-tip and just run it in there just to kind of clean up some of that excess All right, and don't fret about being so perfect. It's okay. I understand to have a little bit of OCD when you're doing it. It's it's just not the end of the world. If you have a little excess in there, that's fine. You just don't want it soaking wet with oil. Um, but yeah, so wipe it down. And if you do get a little too dry, that's fine because we are going to come back towards the end and uh, lubricate it a little bit more. So this is clean. Go ahead and set that aside. Next up, we're gonna do this guide rod and spring. Now with this, really you're just gonna wipe it down, make sure that it's cleaned up. Not a whole lot of carbon will build up on this, but over time, that can be a possibility. I do like to, put oil right there, run this in it, all right. I do like to just kind of lubricate the spring a little bit more. Now again, you don't wanna be soaking wet, you just wanna lubricate it. If when you do that, you feel like there is just way too much, put this in your hand, the guide rod in that close it like a taco open it up set that aside you're done with it all right clean up as you go makes it easier for everybody now next up we're going to move on to the barrel now it's such a little guy this is a little barrel so same thing we're just gonna spray it down honestly that's probably way too much oil but again doesn't matter we're going to clean it up spray inside of it all right let that kind of sit while you wipe down the outside now, scrub it in with the toothbrush. Now, this is where you'll find like if it's super, like if it has a whole lot of carbon built up on it, you're really gonna get dirty while you do this and you may need like a, a little dental pick or something. But generally speaking, you're not gonna come across that too much as long as you just take care of it like you're kind of supposed to. I'm a big fan of small maintenance regularly rather than large maintenance every now and then. Go ahead and wipe down all that excess. Yeah, it really is just this simple, guys. It's not a, it's not brain surgeon, that's for sure. Brain surgery, that's for sure. Now, what we're gonna do is, since we do have a little bit of oil in there, inside the barrel, and you can see through it a little bit, it's not too terribly dirty, we are gonna take this brush, and again, you don't have to do this every time. Oops, I do like to do it every now and then. So, just go through there, shove it through. <laughs> And what you're doing is you're just aggravating all that carbon that may be built up inside of there. All right, now, like you can see, 
some of the dirtiness that is on the table. Let's clean it up. And that's from inside your barrel. Now, when you look at it, it may look a little bit cleaner, maybe, but it's definitely dirtier. So now is when we take your boar snake right here. And again, feed this through here, just like so. Now, I'm not sure if it actually does anything or if it changes anything or if there is any kind of damage that can take place from it. However, I'm a big fan of sending things through the barrel the way that bullets come out of it. All right, now obviously with the brush, you have to agitate it and brush forward and backward so it's a little different. But with this guy, we're just gonna take it, pull it through, let these little wires right here kind of come through and scrape. And those will actually scrape a little bit better than that brush will because these aren't gonna give as much because they can't. So just pull through and here it's scraping. And now we get to that thick part and that's what's gonna really just brush all of that carbon out of it. Now, when you look through it, again, <laughs> from the camera angle, you probably can't see a difference, but in real life, IRL, that sucker is brand new. I mean, it's it's never looked so clean. All right, so get any excess oil off that you don't really need. And again, we will be adding a little bit more oil to it to lubricate it later. Just for now, that's what it is. Now, we go to your slide. And again, the concept is the exact same. You're gonna spray a little oil in it. All right, and you're gonna take your little brush and again, you're just gonna scrub a dub dub. And you just keep scrubbing it, brush it down. And yeah, that's that's really all there is to this. Is the cleaning part's very simple. It's just like a lot of people, they get it in their heads that it's gonna be more complicated. Like the idea of breaking apart your gun. Let me rephrase this. The idea of doing this from the mind of somebody who's not used to doing it. The idea of breaking down your gun, cleaning it, reassembling it, doing a functions check afterwards. It's just like, it's probably a little too much sometimes. So they just don't ever want to do it. And then nobody teaches them how. So I'm going to help. I'm going to try and help teach y'all how. Do the outside. Really on the outside, it won't get too dirty. On the outside, I would say that the dirtiest spots and probably be like right here right on the end of the muzzle so when the bullet comes out all the excess like energy and or not energy like the powder that comes out can uh dirty this up but it's not very likely i see it a lot on shotguns more so than handguns just wipe it down not a big deal now on the on the slide there is one spot that you do want to put a little effort into and that is if i can get the camera on it no is it not going to happen well Oh, yeah, you can kind of see it. There we go, right here, underneath this. This is where your firing pin is housed. So you just want to make sure that you go over this a little bit. The reason why is because, and again, this will probably never happen, but you want to make sure you clean that up because there is a chance that if you don't do that and you just let carbon build up, build up, build up, build up, build up in there, yeah, right there where that hole is, then it'll stop your firing pin from coming out. Right, and I, I know if you're experienced with guns and you know what you're kind of doing when you're working with firearms and their parts and stuff, you're probably laughing. Like, dude, that'll never happen. I, I know, but there is a chance, right? So just make sure you scrub that down. All right, again, wipe off any excess oil that you may find. And it's very simple and it's kind of like washing your own self, right? You get out of the shower, you're gonna be soaking wet, grab your towel, wipe yourself off. Same thing, gun, super wet. Just got super super oiled oiled down you're grabbing your towel and you're cleaning it off all right now as far as cleaning the gun that's literally all there is to it and it's very not it's not complicated at all so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and clear some of this out of the way and we're gonna go ahead and lubricate it and put it back together all right so in order to lubricate it and not get it overly oiled right because we just got it overly oiled we wiped it down you don't want to go back and do it again now, if you put as much oil on it as I did, it's probably good to go now as far as lubrication, but you could have missed a spot, right? So just to be on the safe side, what we're gonna do, get a little oil ready. And I don't know if shaking this up does anything. I know it's not an aerosol, so I, I, or maybe it is aerosol, I don't know. But I just do it anyways. Spray a little bit on the table or on your mat, 
One thing about the cleaning mats is if you spray stuff on it, then it will get really dirty really fast. So another benefit of why a hard table like this is a little bit better. So again, we're gonna come back with this lubricated Q-tip and we're just gonna run it over any of these spots that are A, they obviously look discolored, B, are moving like metal on metal and C, well, like I just said, anything that looks like it's painfully obvious that there's gonna be something sliding on it. So like when you have your slide and it's sitting on top of the gun, sliding backwards and forward when you shoot, well, obviously the bottom of your slide is gonna be rubbing on the top of this. So make sure that you get that oil down more on there. All right, right in here, get the stuff moving around. All right, and a little bit on the inside. Boom, lubricated. Next up, like we did already, but we're gonna do it again, hit the spring up, just a little bit of oil. Boom, that's done. Now your barrel doesn't really slide on a whole lot, but, and they have some free floating barrels too, which don't touch anything, they just float there. But we're gonna go ahead and oil that up. Now, honestly, from oiling this up, it's a little too oiled. So I'm gonna go back to what I did earlier with this towel, set it in there, close it like a taco, boom, it's perfect now. Take your slide, you tip, get a little bit of oil on there, and do the process again on this one. Very simple, guys. Get on the inside, and a lot of times is after you wipe it down, there may be like little puddles of oil, um, and the Q-tip will be good for just kind of spreading that out. All right, wipe that down. Get the, get in there on the inside. That nice and good. Get the top of it. All right, now we're lubricated. So now what we're gonna do is clean up a little bit again and put it back together. All right, so whenever you're putting your gun back together, a lot of times you're just simply working in reverse. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take this, take our barrel and our slide, and we're going to put it back in. Now, your barrel, right, down here, the muzzle is gonna go through the big end right here. The little end is for your guide rod to sit in and it gives it a little bit of opposite pressure, but this is gonna go in through there. Simple, just drop it in there like that. All right, now you may have to line it up again. All right, make sure it's all the way back to the back like this. And again, it's that simple. Take your guide rod. Now with this, you'll notice you have a little diamond shape plastic piece and the diamond shape end. Okay, well, square hole, square peg, they fit with each other. And now on this side, you're gonna notice you have a little cutout that's kind of like a half circle. And on this, you're gonna have two flat sides and a half circle curved side on both ends, right? Again, line it up. Now it may be easier for you to put your guide rod in to this hole at the end and then press it in a little bit. And what'll happen when you press it, it kind of comes out like that. So, boom, just like that. Now you're in there like swimwear. So next up, we're gonna take the bottom half and your slide, and we're going to just line it up and slide it back on. Okay, switch over here so you can see it. Now let's go ahead and lock it back to the rear, how we had it in the beginning. Now take this, oops, dropped my phone. Take this, distract me, bring that back down. Now we're gonna take your little lever, slide it up. Oh, and I just noticed there's a little arrow right there that shows you like, hey, slide it up. So boom, just like that. Now you can release it back in place, all right? Now, what we're gonna do is uh, really quick, I just did a little functions check, it was a very small one, um, but, but I'm gonna show y'all how to do a functions check on this as well. For that though, we're going to take this extra rag and wipe off my hands. So. My hands get super oily, then even if I clean off the gun, every time I touch the gun, that's what's gonna happen. Got it. It's gonna be super oily. So give the outside of this a nice little rundown. Boom. There we go, we're good. Now, function check. There can be a whole lot of steps depending on how far you wanna go with it, and there can be just a few steps. I like to just keep it kind of basic and this is kind of just um, something that's very good because what's gonna happen is when you take it apart, you wanna make sure that when you put it back together, you didn't do something wrong. 
So every time you take your gun apart, I highly recommend you do a functions check afterwards. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. It's not like a 10 minute process. It's very quick. Okay, and you can even get to the point where before you go to the range, grab your gun out, do a functions check, make sure it works before you actually get out there. Because last thing you really want is to get out to the range, go to shoot, and your gun not work. And it's a big surprise to you. And then you made the trip out there, you paid the money, and it's just all for nothing. So very simply, we're gonna do a functions check. So what I like to do is slide it back. Okay, it slid back. Now we're gonna slide it back. Use your uh, slide catch. All right, cool, your slide catch works, right? Now does it work? Now does your slide release work? Which is the same thing, but boom, that worked. All right, now, since you slid it back and you released it, it did cock the gun, so the gun is, is charged, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your safety, push that up. Now you're gonna go to shoot, nothing happens. Good, it's not supposed to. All right, now what you're gonna do is put on fire. And with this one, since it does have this little beaver tail safety, you could even go as far as, okay, look, it's off safety, right? Your safety switch is down, but it still won't fire. Good, that means this safety works because it has like two safeties on it. Now, we're gonna go ahead and get that in there and we're gonna go ahead and fire the gun. Now, when we fire it, we're gonna hold the trigger back and we're not gonna release it quite yet, all right? So, does it fire? Boom. Look at that, it fired. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna rack it back again and then release the trigger to see if the sear resets. So, go ahead and grab this. All right, now I'm gonna bring it closer to the speaker so you can hear, and I'm just gonna release the trigger. All right, you heard that little click. It's exactly what you wanted to hear. Now, fire the trigger again because it did reset. Boom, works just how you want it to. Now, that's really all I do. You can also take your magazine Put your magazine in here and release that forward. Again, make sure there's no ammo, no freedom seeds for this part. Slide that in there like that, boom. Now, what you're gonna check for is to make sure that your slide locks back when your magazine is empty. So we're not gonna press your slide lock, right? We're just gonna hold it down here so that way we can know we're not actually gonna, actually gonna hit it. And we're just gonna slide it back, locked on its own, All right? Good, that's how it works. So we can even release it, boom, do it again. All right, drop mag. Look at that, magazine release works as well. And that's it. That's all there is to it. You have successfully disassembled, cleaned, reassembled, and learned how to do a functions check on the MMP 380 shield. Yeah! All right, guys, and that's really all there is to it. If you liked the video, then go ahead and like it down below. Leave a comment if you think there's anything that I missed or that you would add yourself any helpful tips that maybe you've learned in your life. Uh, also leave a comment if you have any guns that you would recommend me take apart and clean, etc. in the future as well. Subscribe if you haven't already. And for notifications for whenever I drop a video in the future, hit that notification bell. And as always, guys, stay safe, stay active, stay frosty, my friends.